I've received some interesting feedback lately. A couple of people have told me that I'm anti-religion. Another person went a little further and said, you exemplify the old trope, spirituality good, religion bad. Yeah, I pushed back a little bit on that to try to find out what they were referring to in, in this feedback. And the glib responses I got were things like, you know what you said, you know what you believe, and there was no elaboration. So today I want to follow up on this question and ask, am I anti-religion? And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. You know, I've studied theology, I've studied psychology, and I've studied spirituality. In 1978, I began a two-year graduate program on spirituality. 1978, that's before most people ever heard the word spirituality. And I was interested in spirituality, and still am, because I find it curious, I find it fascinating, the way people experience transcendence in their life, the way they experience this more than dimension that enables them to create and discover meaning and purpose in life. What draws us forward? And I'm, I'm very interested in that. And yes, I've, as I said, I've studied theology and I've studied psychology, and, but my spiritual path has really been grounding for me. But you know, my spiritual path was nurtured in religion. I went to a Roman Catholic grade school and that's where I learned meditation. I would go into church and sit and sometimes one of my teachers, a Roman Catholic nun, would come and get in the row behind me and kneel down. And she would give me some simple instructions. She'd tell me things like, focus your attention on the light, the candle burning in front of the altar. Take that light into yourself. Close your eyes and just imagine that light illuminating you, lighting you up. And that's how I learned meditation. When I was in middle school, and I've carried that tradition of meditation and contemplative prayer with me ever since. I'm very thankful for that. And I've learned many other things in the context of religion. So yes, I've studied from Christian people, I've studied from Jewish people, from Buddhist people, from Hindu people, as well as from Native American elders. And I appreciate that these religious traditions have preserved spiritual practices, they've developed them, they've honed them, they've left them to us as an inheritance, and that's very important. So no, I'm not anti-religion. I've also been involved in professional ministry for over 40 years. I've pastored churches, I was a hospital chaplain, I was director of a theology program, I've done all kinds of things. Somebody who's anti-religion doesn't do that. But I'm very critical of organized religion. And I'm, that criticism is based on experiencing religion from the inside, from the inside of the organization. And my criticisms fall in three categories. First, organized religion has really hurt a lot of people. We know of things like sexual abuse and the financial abuse it's really been in, in the news the last couple of decades, but there's a long history of a lot more things. The way organized religion helped to eradicate many indigenous people committed and in, were involved in genocide around the world, the ways in which people were marginalized, that women's experience was discounted, that, that people of different backgrounds were, were silenced, the way in which people, because of their sexuality, their sexual orientation or gender identity, were really treated as pariahs. All of that was the function of organized religion. So organized religion has hurt a lot of people and by and large, leaders in organized religion haven't apologized for the sins of the past. They don't acknowledge that it happened, but instead, move on with selective memory. Secondly, in the West, houses of worship 
are declining in attendance. And it's no surprise to me. Now, there are a lot of factors, but there are two that I consider most important. For those houses of worship that are on the traditional end of the spectrum, what they do in those houses of worship has become so irrelevant and so boring and people can't find a connection between them, their lives and what happens there, so they simply leave. On the other end of the spectrum, and this is particularly true for Christian evangelical churches, they've developed these amphitheaters that are really theaters with shows that they put on and they lack any substantive content and people become bored with that. So people are simply becoming bored with institutional religion and they're walking. And that's a problem created by institutional religion. It's not people who have left, it's not their fault, but instead it's organized religion. Thirdly, in the West, there's a pandemic of isolation and loneliness. The Surgeon General of the United States has repeatedly said that the single greatest mental health problem in the United States is loneliness. And I believe that organized religion has really contributed to that pandemic of loneliness because it's helped create systems where people are included and excluded. There are those who are included and welcome. And if you believe and say the right things and do the right things, then you're included. There are those who clearly aren't. But even if you're included, if you push back a little and ask questions and have a different opinion, well, you quickly move from the included side to the excluded side. And that's all a function of organized religion. It's not religion itself that I have an issue with. Instead, I think there are problems with organized religion and how it functions, because it functions for its own benefit. It functions for the benefit of the insiders. And even those groups that are more progressive, whether they're Christian, Jewish, or Muslim, they often turn into cliques rather than real communities. Religion has an important function. Religion helps us organize and understand what we experience. It's been the reservoir for the great spiritual traditions and spiritual practices. I think Dorothy Soli, the theologian, said it well when she explained that Religion doesn't confirm that there are hungry people in the world. I mean, clearly we know that without religion telling us that. Religion interprets the hungry people to be our brethren, our brothers and sisters, whom we allow to starve. Religion is that venue through which we are able to come to look and understand and really dissect what's happening in our reality. So yes, I think good religion is very important for us. And in the meantime, I hope organized religion learns to clean up its act rather than be so self-serving. Thanks for your time today. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, leave me some comments, and know that I appreciate your time with Spirituality Beyond Borders.